Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Unfortunately, we now have people like Ma Edgar Lungu and others trying to take advantage of the situation. I am really sad. I, when I followed through the press conference of uh, uh, His Excellency, Dr. Pre Dr. Edgar Chagwalungu, I was, I was very saddened. I was very saddened. I was saddened. Why I'm saddened? Because first and foremost, I don't believe Valungu has got solutions to the problems that we have. And he knows it. As far as I'm concerned, I don't think Valungu has got solutions to the problems that we are facing. I don't think he has those solutions. He doesn't have. And this is why, even when he had that press conference, he only read out the statement and could not take questions. Why Valungu could not take questions? It's because he doesn't have answers to the challenges that we have. He doesn't have. But Ed Galungu doesn't have solutions to the problems that we are facing. I've got no problem whatsoever with Valungu coming back. I don't lose sleep on Valungu coming back. It doesn't bother me. Why it doesn't bother me? Because it's his constitutional right. If he wants to come back, he can come back. It's his constitutional right. The challenge that I have is that as much as he's coming back, he doesn't have solutions to the current problems that we are facing as a country. So if he doesn't have solutions, what's the point? Why is he even coming back? Why is he even coming back? I want you to follow me on you know, the, the, the points that I'm raising on, on, on my Edgar Lungu. And I'm doing this not because I hate him, no. 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 And I know somebody will say, but you are the one that was singing Alewirirapo. How can you come today and say he doesn't have solutions? It is just like Kumuanakashi. Wamono Mwanakashi Umusumu. Wambo Kumufuaya. Ulela Ndananko. Palasi Ngoisa Mwana Mufufuwa Lela Ndananko. Uyumu Ntutafikirepo. You can't marry that person. You can't marry that person. That's why we have met so many women in our lives. So many women we have met. So many women we have met. But we didn't marry. We didn't marry them. We didn't marry them. We married those that we thought these, okay, at least this one. It is because when you engage somebody and you feel that really this person doesn't have what it takes, you withdraw, you can't continue. So don't come here and start telling me to say, no, you are the one that said the label it up. Yes, yes. But I, after working with Valungu for some distance, I realized he doesn't have the solutions. He doesn't have the solutions. From a personal point of view, my interaction with him, from a personal point of view, I don't think he has the solutions. But, beyond that, even even, um, even, even in public, eh, we all listen to what Edgar Lungo says. Do you hear solutions? Hello? Yes? So if you honestly, 
you uh, you have seen i'm talking and you are calling me does that make sense no you can go for, forget it come on eh hello i'm watching you and you are calling me what nonsense is that eh i'm watching you you know one and they run them to me on phone eh hello that is abusing my number for each five I'll open phone lines with the number that I use. I'll open phone lines and you can call on that one. Not on my direct line. I will open the phone lines and you can contribute through that line. Not on my direct line. No. There is a line, this phone, that is the phone that I use. And I'll give you the number where you can, you know, where you can call and make your contribution. Not for now. So, so the first thing is that I do admit, eh, I do admit that we have got challenges and I've just alluded to some of the challenges that we are facing as a country. And as we are facing these challenges, some politicians, especially those who are in the opposition, want to take advantage of the situation to come as messiahs. But you want to come as messiahs and you're not giving the solutions. You are not giving the solutions. You are not giving the solutions. Valungu read out a statement, but he could not take questions. Why couldn't he take questions? And mind you, since he came out in, you know, in active politics, that is the first time that he spoke. That is the first time that he spoke. He's not engaging people. He's not. He's not engaging people so that we hear what he has. So that we hear what he has. We are, we are not getting that. We are not getting that. Then, admittedly, there are a number of issues that uh, Ed Galungu raised, which really this government ought to look at. This is the truth. There are some issues that Valungu raised which ought to be looked at by this government. I don't believe in the so-called the 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 the, the, uh, the democratic space is shrinking. I don't believe that. I don't believe that, and I don't want to be part of that narrative. I don't want to be part of to be part of that narrative to say the democratic space is shrinking. I don't want to be part of that. And that should be interesting to you, especially that I'm one of those people who have been arrested more times than any other opposition political party leader. I don't think there is anyone who has been arrested more than I have been arrested. I've been arrested by this government nine times, actually ten. I've been arrested ten times by this government. By this government, ten times I've been arrested. But still, I would not say the democratic space is shrinking, no. I would not say that. I would not say that because... You know, when you talk about democratic space shrinking, you are basically, I mean, uh, bringing out, uh, you know, something to say government has, has, has totally covered, has totally covered the, uh, the freedoms of people, or they have withdrawn, or they are trampling on the, the freedoms of people. We can count a number of people that have been arrested. Yes, I've been arrested. I'm one of them. You can count Sean Tembo. Valungu did uh, um, count out some of the people that have been arrested. But how many are they? How many are they in a country that has got 20 million people? If you look at, in terms of percentage, let's, let's be realistic. Because when you make a, a huge statement like that, Democratic space is shrinking. Why is it shrinking? It's shrinking because people are, people are being arrested. How many are being arrested? How many are being arrested? I mean, those are our Sambirila. Statistically, let's look at significance for you to, to talk about democratic space is shrinking. How many have been arrested? I am one of those people that, that has been arrested. But count me, yes. Valungu counted a number of people. Hey, myself, Sean Tembo, 
what 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 how many have been arrested in terms of in terms of depriving their uh, their rights to express themselves or in line with expressing themselves or in line with politics how many have been arrested for us you know we for us to divest to 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 di, 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 diversify or to conclude we must have variables that we look at to say look at these variables and out of these we can conclude to say this is happening but if you ask this country how many people have been have been arrested for us to say to make that huge statement to say the democratic pace is shrinking how many how many Yes, I've been arrested, but I'm not going to, to say because I was arrested, then democratic space is, is shrinking. No, 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 I'm not going to say that. And I'm not going to just, it's not that my arrests are justified. No, they are not justified. They are not justified. They are very wrong. They, 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 they arrest my arrest. If anything, almost all of them, they are not justified. But because I've been arrested, and because uh, Sean Temple was arrested, and uh, whoever was arrested, I mean, count us, five of us, out of 20 million people, at democratic spaces shrinking. How? We? It doesn't make sense. Statistically, you can't. Scientifically, you can't. You can't. You can't. When you say democratic space is shrinking, really there are a num there should be a significant number of people that you are that you are pointing to to say these people are being arrested because the government is trying to take away their their freedom, their freedoms. But so far, no, the number is insignificant. The number is insignificant to for us to come and say democratic space is shrinking and when you look at Valungu he even counted people that have got genuine charges honestly how can for example because there not everyone who has been arrested has been arrested on political lines some of these people are facing are facing charges of having had taken advantage of our resources Proceed of crime, I mean, some of these people, I mean, we know for sure that, you know, the day before yesterday, they had nothing. All of a sudden, they have so much. I mean, if these people are being arrested, not all of them, not all of them, but some of them, a good number of them, actually, those who have been arrested, you can agree to say, no, surely, this person must be able to explain how did you amount, how did you amass such wealth? How did you amass such wealth? So we should not confuse political arrests and those people who are being arrested on, on, on corruption-related charges. There is a difference. Balungu gave an example of Bakambui. To say, for example, Bakambui was, has just been jailed. I mean, Bakambuiri, what he said should be condemned by any reasonable Zambian. It should be condemned by any reasonable Zambian. You can't talk about the, the jailing of Bakambuiri, the convicting of Bakambuiri as a, an example of democratic space shrinking. You can't. You can't. You can't talk about, you know, the arrest of but you can't uh, let, let me not let me not mention because there are certain people that you know uh, but you know some of these people you know some of these people you can't you can't say no 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 uh, uh, this is democratic space is shrinking no way. so we this is the truthfulness that i wish we could all have where we can be truthful and look at things as they are objectively to say no nah, uh, EKC, it is not political. Okay, EKC, it is political. Okay, EKC, you know, 
we should be able to do that. Of course, there are some arrests which, I mean, are, are bizarre. There are some arrests which are bizarre. For example, the issue of Chris Zuman Zimba. I told you about Chris Zuman Zimba. I told you Chris Zuman Zimba and his colleagues are not interested, are not in a part of Gassi. That was bad. That was bad. And it is unfortunate that they had to go through the entire process and only to be acquitted. Because somebody should have seen that this case will be is, 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 is a brought in dead case. Somebody should have seen that. Somebody should have seen that this case is not going on anywhere. Somebody should have seen that. I don't know why we why we are allowing cases which don't make sense to go on until they reach the end whereby now at the end of the day government becomes liable i don't know why we are so casual we are allowing certain things to happen such that at the end of the day government becomes liable when i was growing up civil servants used to be so scared of government being sued they were so scared of government being sued they were very scared. They never wanted government to be sued. Because what used to happen when, you know, government is sued and they pay, some of these civil servants were being penalized. And they never wanted that. But now people have become so casual. It's like, it's okay. They can do all these things. And at the end of the day, government can even be sued. People no longer a, a, a care if government is going to be sued or not, they don't care. Because the case of Chris Jumanzimba is one such case. Even this case, Yavena Kasanda, eh? even this case, Yavena Kasanda, the way it has been handled, the way it has been handled, surely, Chris case Yavena Kasanda. Honestly, how can you talk about espionage when others not worry? You have let go of others. The, uh, the, uh, the foreigners are gone. And you remain with a few Zambians. And you want to continue going on with this case. I mean, I'm not discussing the details of the matter. I'm just discussing it from a general point of view to say, really, how solid is this case here, Venakasanda? I'm not saying it is weak or not, but I'm asking those who are part of this case, I'm asking you to say how solid is it? How solid is it? Can you secure? Can you secure a conviction? That is the question that I'm asking. As a Zambian, as a taxpayer, as a politician, I'm asking you that the evidence that you have, do you think you have enough evidence to prosecute that case? Or it is a case that is going into another knowledge, uh, another another acquittal. And look how long these people stayed in Maceos. So yes, there are certain cases that really we can point to. But at the end of the day, in spite of these isolated cases, in a country of more than 20 million people, you cannot come up and say democratic pace is, is shrinking. So in other ways, I'm, I'm just not agreeing with Valungu. And other people that have said democratic places shrinking, me, I don't agree with them. I don't agree with them. Because some of these statements, they are alarming to the outside world. They make our, they paint our country, uh, you know, in a bad light. Our country's reputation is put in jeopardy. When you are making these wild statements of democratic space is shrinking, democratic space is shrinking, our reputation is being dented. And at the end of the day, we have these situations whereby, no, the creditors don't want to, uh, to, uh, uh, to play ball. No, IMF is being difficult. Mwanawati, you are also contributing. And when that happens, you start dancing. Ah, yes, they are failing. Hey, IMF has, is flopped, is a flop. Hey, whatever, whatever. As it is being a flop, who is suffering? Who is suffering at the end of the day? At the end of the day, is an ordinary Zambian. And this is where I'm saying patriotism tatukwete. 
Tatukwe te patriotism. There is no patriotism. We we are not doing politics for the love of this country. We are doing politics for the love of ourselves. Because if you care, you would not be celebrating the the failure of IMF. You shouldn't. You shouldn't. Because IMF is our survival. IMF is our bridge. IMF program is our bridge at the moment. You can say, no, there is no country where IMF has sorted out whatever, whatever. What do you have? What is the alternative? Because other, uh, some of you, you criticize, no, uh, we don't need IMF, whatever, whatever. What is the alternative? What is the alternative? No, we can use homegrown solution. We can do this, we can do this, we can do... We live in a global economy. We live in a global economy. We live in a global economy. Zimbabwe is struggling right now. In spite of the minerals that they have. They have minerals, but they are struggling, you know, to come out of their, 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 their economic uh, challenge. Because of the restrictions that they are facing on the global market. Which is why I actually agree with President Haka Inde Ichirima when he's moving around and he's taking pictures with these people. I agree. And I'm happy with it. I am happy with it because he's selling the country. He's opening opportunities. And those opportunities to open and those people to have confidence, you need the IMF. Because, by the way, these very people that Haka Inde Ichirima is meeting, these are the IMF. We cannot do it isolated, you know, in isolation. We can't. We need others. No country can manage. Not even America itself. America needs other countries. So it is naive and lack of experience for some people who speak to say, no, we can have homegrown solutions, homegrown solutions. Your minerals might, might be banned. Your minerals might not be bought and you may have to start selling them, you know, on a black market and selling them on a black market is, it will be cheaper. You will sell them cheaply and you may not be able to import some of the things that you need. So those who are patriotic, those who understand governance and those who love our country, there is no way you are going to be, number one, be issuing inflammatory, uh, inflammatory statements such as democratic space is shrinking. There is no way you are going to be celebrating the glitch that we are facing with our creditors. There is no way you are going to be celebrating the possible failure of the IMF program. There is no way you are going to do that. Because when you are doing that, you need to give solutions. You need to give alternatives. And this is where I'm even coming to Balungu to say, what is, his, what is he offering? What is his alternative? What is his alternative? To all these challenges, we can condemn, you know, HH, but what are we proposing as an alternative? And if we love our country, if we love our country, we should be able to promote, to give those solutions. Otherwise, we should be able to encourage those who are trying to do something. So, from my point of view, Valungu, it is unfortunate that he wants to take advantage of the situation that is currently going on. And the Zambians will only be fools to buy into the rhetorics of Vaed Galungu. If Valungu gives us solutions, I will be one of those that will support him. But so far, we don't have alternative solutions. We don't have them. Then talking about the issue of, uh, you know, Mao, Sampa, and PF, and whatever, whatever, whatever. That situation was created by Valungu. Like I've, I've said before. Me, I used to say it here. Valungu, you cannot, you cannot be double standard. On one side, no, I'm not in politics. On one side, you are holding on to PF. PF has been taken by Mao Sampa because you packed it. You were, you were not playing good politics. And Mao Sampa has just beaten you to the dirty politics. 
the selfishness of you wanting to hold on to PF and not giving it because you know you can hold on to it but giving it the life that it needed this is what has killed PF and at the moment if you are really politicians if you are really politicians you should know that PF is gone and don't waste your time fighting PF you will not resolve the issue of PF before 2026 2026 will be here you will still be fighting with Mao Samp. And Mao Samp will be president of PF. 2026, mark my words. Mark my words. 2026 will be here. And Mao Samp will still be PF president. You'll be struggling. I know, eventually, these court cases like here, what Dr. Neva Sumumba, Neva MMD, you will eventually win. You will eventually tri triumph. But it will be useless because... PF by then would be a wreck. Mao Samba would have wrecked it terribly such that you have nothing. You have nothing. PF will be nothing. So, Balungu, if you want to salvage or if you want to help the former PF members, this is the time that you have to engage, get another political party, and bring everybody into that political party. Bring everybody into that political party. You have the members. But you don't have PF. PF is going to Mao Samp. Don't waste your time. Find another party. Go into that party. And bring all the members there. And fund them. Fund them. Bring out resources. politics. You need resources. If you don't have resources and if you cannot mobilize resources, you better quickly give the party to somebody. I'm saying give the party to somebody. I know PF is gone, but you have the membership. Find another party identify somebody let that person uh, be running because as it is i mean you can't even those the threats that you are putting up those threats that you are putting up we are going to fight we are going to fight hey legally and whatever whatever makebi zulu i i i hold him in high esteem and i recognize his efforts but he can only do so much. And you cannot turn one law firm. One law firm. I mean, those people are overwhelmed. I mean, those people are overwhelmed. Those people are overwhelmed. Are you really thinking properly? Hmm? All the cases, all the cases, all the cases, all the cases that could be Makebi Zulu. Makebi Zulu. Makebi Zulu. I think Makebi Zulu should do should should move from that office and start renting in their sun share. The entire building. Provide money for Makebi Zulu so that he say he should start renting Chirachi Sun Share actually. Eh? The entire building. Let him take up that sun share, the entire building, so that he can employ many lawyers. Many lawyers. Because your cases But then Makebizuru cannot handle, even if he is super human, he cannot handle all these cases if there are no resources. Eh? I know what is happening there. I know what is happening. That guy will you have to Mwamusenda, you take him in some hidden place and you said Mwalam Pero Rupia. Eh? And you failed to, 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 to release money. You failed to release money. You failed to give him money. Kutuma you are fighting like that. You get a person, a, a very key person, that one. Namu Shondelanda. I'm not going to mention his name. You got this person, a key person, Kulimao Zamba. You got him. 
And you are lucky that they didn't even charge you abduction because that was very serious also. And the guy, Muamu Vikapo, no, we are going to give you money. You didn't give him money. Katushindala manga sharifu. Katushindala manga sharifu man, because ningu fat manifu mwalingiro kumpera at shinga. Ni one million. Katushinga sharifu ma one million. Barungu vushe one if ni one million. Tapo kere udi umu, nariranda nangu, tapo kere one million. Bye, can you know Makebi had to win Pia? Money never came. And I know if Makebi Zulu was given that money, that money would have been delivered. But I know Makebi was not, I'm sure I didn't have the money. I didn't even, um, maybe he knew about it, but I don't think, you know, the money was provided. So if you don't even have my resources, how are you going to fight? So for me, I'm Pia. I'm a politics, I'm Pia. Fumiani Mpia, look for another party, get resources, let all the membership come into that party. Let all the membership come into that party. Members of parliament, they can stay in parliament. Mao Sampaka not, uh, you know, uh, expel them. Mao Sampaka not uh, expel them. Let them be there. Let them be there. Mpaka 2026. But for the rest of the membership, find them somewhere where they can have a platform and provide resources. Don't just come on, 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 on media and start th issuing threats. You know, when you are issuing threats, you must have something that is backing you. But we share what is required for him to issue those threats what is backing him but okay even if Nawakwata, because one thing that I can say is that don't take it for granted don't take it for granted that no Balungu doesn't have powers Mungu uh -uh. uh -uh. Those of you who are in power, don't make a mistake to underrate Edgar Chagwalungu. Don't make a mistake. I am saying Balungu is taking advantage of the situation to come back, but he doesn't have solutions. But at the same time, I am telling you, don't make a mistake to underrate Edgar Chagwalungu. Don't make that mistake. Why? Because of the current economic challenges that people are facing. And this is a situation whereby, even if he doesn't have solutions, they will say, ah, Avapo we know. Before he left, we were buying fuel so much. Before he left, we were buying millimil. That in itself is a, is a serious threat. That in itself is a serious threat political capital for by for, for by Ed Galu. Even if he's not taking questions now. Even if he's not offering alternatives. He simply have to talk, to talk about how it was before. Even if he can never go back. Even if we can never go back. The fact is that we can never go back to 130 kwacha millimeter. We can't go back. We will never go back to 17 kwacha fuel. We will not go back. Even if Barungu are well. But Innocent Zambians can vote for Valungu or can push for Valungu based on that. So be very careful on how you are handling Valungu. Be very careful. The statement was a little bit confrontational. Government should not take it at the same pitch. Should not take it at the same level. Because at the end of the day, Valungu is an underdog. So if government engages in a fight with Valungu, the one that is going to win is Valungu. Because people are going to sympathize with Valungu. Valungu is an underdog. Don't cheat yourself to say, no, Zambians will remember. You like to talk about, it. hey, Kadarism, Kadarism. You are exaggerating. You are exaggerating. By UPND, you exaggerate. 
You exaggerate. You talk about like Zambia was so bibo. Zambia was, you know, it was, no, it wasn't. I still used to live here during the time of Alungu. I still used to live here. I was arrested. I used to be arrested, yes, from here. Sean Tembo was also being arrested. And he is still there, and he was there. So come on, don't exaggerate this issue of to say, no freedoms, freedoms, come on. Eh? Talk about something else, not this freedom that like you say, hey, now freedoms, freedom, freedom. I mean, that's your freedom, we want. That's your freedom. That's your freedom. Hmm? And some of us, we, we are not even scared of, uh, 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 you know, armor sales. What we are scared of is hunger. That's what we are scared of. If you see us compromising in talking, 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 ninsa to tina, not to am jail. Ninsa to tina. So, hey, freedom, freedom, freedom. Tatuya freedom. Tatuya freedom. I mean, some of some of the people that the life that they live is worse than you know being mujer already. Eh? Ngakutu wa mujere uredia. What is better? Uri mujere uredia. Then you are free, but you have no food. Eh? In some countries, kutu wa kumwa no kwa mujere. A lot of people in other countries, like in South Africa, some of us, <laughs> we have tested. Nari testa po jere ya South Africa. Mu South Africa mdala, uru chelo, wali abala de chuk bread. Aba mtu babidi, bread jimo, baba pe. Milk, so wale nwa tea na milk. Eh? Na rice wa kupera. Inkoko, wino wino fi. But umuntu wali mchifungo. Some people, a lot of our people would prefer being in jail. In, in, in countries where things are okay. Than being free. So if freedom, what I'm going to say, freedom, freedom. Doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. But the point I'm trying to make is that. Don't underrate Malungu. Don't underrate Malungu. And don't take him in the political path that he wants to take you. Where he's talking about removing immunity. Hey, Shan Shan, you can even kill me. Blah, 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 blah. And if you take him on that lay, on, in that trajectory, he will win public sympathy because he's an underdog at the moment. What you have to do is to give him the politics Challenge him on a political platform. Challenge him to take questions from journalists. Challenge him to go and face this young man from Radio Phoenix eh? at G3, eh? Chimwega. Let him go and face Chimwega pa, 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 Radio, pa Radio Phoenix. Eh? Let him go and face Costa Mwanza, but damn on TV. That's, that's, what you should, those are, that's what you should be throwing at him. That's what you should be throwing at him. Not to, to take him on the confrontation or whatever, whatever. Show that Valungu is not a political heavyweight as much as he is a former, former, former uh, head of state. Show that there is no political substance in Valungu. Let people see that there is no political substance in Valungu. With due respect, I'm not insulting him as a person. I'm talking from a political point of view. Na papa. There is no political substance. There is no political weight in Valungu. And you can do this easily. Let's challenge Valungu. Let him go and face Chimwega. Let him go and face Costa Mwanza. Let him come and face... You know, you like protecting ZNBC. ZNBC, you don't want people to go there. Let him go and face... A, a, a Grevazio Zulu on ZNBC extend Valungu Beteni let him come and give solutions alternative solutions Mulatina Sana you know the hey, non Canadian program you just bring cadres there cadres there cadres there bring even some of these opposition put them there let them be questioned let Zambian people hear But at the end of the day, really, what is so sad for me is that most of us, we are acting from our selfish positions. And once things are okay with us, it's okay. 
And by UPND, you have got this attitude. A lot of by UPND have got this attitude. By UPND, you have to realize that if for you to, to deliver to the people, it is a concerted effort. Everyone has to put in something. Everyone has to put in something. Everyone has to put in something. And those that you can even bring in, bring them in. But now we get in Rama positions. But really you are not delivering. Now we get in our position, but you are not delivering. Zambia will not change like that. Haka in the each name will not change this country by himself. He needs everyone. He needs everyone. But a lot of you, by you PND, you are holding on to positions, but you are doing nothing. You are not helping that Haka in the each name. You are not. I know Haka in the each name is working day and night. He wants to make things happen. But the supporting team is very poor. And we are not saying this so that we can be recognized. Uh -uh. Because even me, you, uh, even if I'm appointed, even if I'm given a position, I cannot change anything alone. I need to work with people. So don't make a mistake to think that, no, we are talking like this because we want to be recognized. Yes, we are. it's true. We are saying we have got something that we can offer. But as much as we have something that we can offer, we would want also others to put in something because we will be all failures, even if we are appointed. We will all be failures. We all need to do something. But there are too many people that are loafing in this government of Aka in the HLM. There are too many people that are just drawing a salary. They are not doing much. And as long as these people, there are, there are too many passengers in a government, it will be very, very, very difficult to deliver. There are too many passengers. You know, you are so jealous. You are so selfish. Some people are saying, no, these people, they are just appointing each other. Tongas and losses and whatever, whatever. Do you know that there are Tongas who are being fired out of this government? Do you know that losses who are being excluded? Do you know that there are Tongas who are being frustrated in this government? I, I don't think for me it, it, is on, it is on tribal because I know yesterday I was actually talking to one Tonga man who has been removed from, from his position. He's a Tonga man. He has been removed. And I've met a number of losses and Tongas who are frustrated, who are complaining. So I don't think we should take it on tribal lines. I think we should desist from that. Because I don't think there is somebody who is being employed because you are Tonga. Eh? I don't think there is somebody who is being employed because you are Tonga. You can't just go to Gary Combo to say, oh, hello, I'm Tonga, I've come to be employed. I don't think Gary Combo will, will give you employment as much as he is Tonga. I don't think Aka Inde Ichirema will give you an employment just because you say, oh, hello, I'm Tonga. No, I don't think he will give you employment. So there are a number of Tongas that are looking for employment or that are looking for opportunities, and they're not getting it, getting them. They are going in these offices, speaking Tonga, asking for favors, and they're not getting the favors. So I think from my point of view is that let us desist from looking at this issue to say it is, it is about tribe. It is about tribe. It is about tribe. It is simply about maybe call it nepotism. Otherwise, you know, it's about People that I know, eh? in, if I'm appointed, the people that I know, the people that will be making phone calls, most of them will be people from the Copper Belt, will be people from Chinsari, because this is where my connection is. This is where my connection is. And I will not be employing them, or I will not be looking at them, because they are Bemba. No, it is because Narimu is you. Umuntu to Adnan Kupatifu Secondary School. I some office one. Now I'm like a shashan. I'm like a leche. And when I help this person, it is not because he is of this tribe. No, it is because I know him. So we need to understand this and let us be very careful not to, you know, create chaos in our country where we are. We want to propagate. No, it's tribalism. It's tribalism. I don't think there is anyone who is being employed based on the tribe. Yes, if people are being favored because they are known. 
Even me, I know. Like this guy I was meeting yesterday, he's Tonga. But I've known him for a long time. I've known him for a long time. And I went to meet him. We chatted and whatever, whatever. And before he has helped me, even now, I've received, I've received money. I've received money from a Tonga person. Tonga person. And this Tonga guy that I've received money from is a guy that I've known him a long time. A very long time. Hmm? From a long time, I know him. But he has sent me money. He hasn't sent me money because, uh, I mean, he knows I'm not Tonga. And there are so many Tongas. He has got even relatives who are Tonga. He hasn't sent them money. He has sent it to me. So let us be very careful when we are discussing this thing. Now, Papa, look at it as somebody, people that you know. Like this person, he knows me. He has sent me money. And we know each other for a long time. And yet the guy is Tonga. He didn't send it to other Tongas. He didn't send it because that he is a, he's, he's Bemba. I'm not going to send it. No. The people that I talked to in UPND, a number of them are Tonga. Tonga and Lozi. But these people that I talk to, they don't... It's out of the friendship that we have. Out of the friendship that we have. Yes, hey, you have known somebody was telling me, no, hey, the Hakka the HLM, I will never appoint you because you are not Tonga. Whatever, whatever. I don't think so. I don't believe that. There are so many people that have been appointed who are not Tongas. There are so many people who have been appointed who are not Tongas. This is DJ Mutati exclusive. Alright, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutati Mpondo. I love you. Peace. I gotta go.